Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Configuring Amplitude Modulation on the SMA100B. In this short presentation, we'll show you how to create amplitude modulated signals using the Rodian Schwartz SMA100B Analog Signal Generator. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of amplitude modulation. If you're not familiar with amplitude modulation, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding Amplitude Modulation, before continuing with this presentation. To enable analog modulation on the SMA100B, we simply click on the modulation tile and then select Amplitude Modulation from the menu. Remember that modulation means varying some parameter of the transmitted carrier, so our first step is defining the modulating signal. A number of different modulation sources can be used with the SMA100B. Some of these sources are internal to the instrument and others are external. Internal sources of modulation include the two low frequency or LF generators as well as the noise generator. We'll start by looking at internal AM modulation sources. The SMA contains two internal LF or low frequency generators. You can think of these as being simple function generators that are built into the instrument and which we can use as modulation sources. Like a standalone function generator, each LF generator supports four different shapes. These are sine, pulse, triangle, and trapezoid. The configuration parameters will be different depending on which shape is chosen. If we want to generate a simple AM modulated signal, we can do this by enabling AM modulation and selecting LF generator 1 as our source. In this example, we'll leave the default LF generator setting of a 1 kHz sine wave. If needed, AM modulation depth can be configured as well. All that's left now is to turn on RF and the SMA will be producing a basic AM modulated signal. Recall that AM modulation creates spectral sidebands. When we use a simple 1000 Hz sine wave signal as a modulation source, we see this as two tones in spectrum, 1000 Hz above and 1000 Hz below the carrier. Human speech, on the other hand, contains very broad spectral content, so if we were to use human speech as our modulation source or modulating signal, the spectrum of the resulting AM modulated carrier would look very different. We can simulate a wide bandwidth modulating signal, such as human speech, by using the noise generator as our modulating source. We can choose either Gaussian or uniformly distributed noise, and we can also specify the noise bandwidth. Increasing the noise bandwidth causes the sidebands to widen proportionally. In addition to using the internal LF generator, the SMA can also generate signals using an external modulation source to create the modulated RF output. In this case, the input or modulating waveform does not need to be regular or periodic. The SMA100B supports external modulation sources by means of two connectors, external 1 and external 2. Either or both of these BNC connectors can be connected to an external modulation source. For each external connector, we can specify the coupling, AC or DC, as well as the impedance. Let's end with a brief summary. In order to create an amplitude modulated signal, we need a modulation source. Internal sources include the SMA's internal LF generator, which can produce standard pattern waveforms like sine, pulse, triangle, etc. In this case, we generally need to specify the shape of the modulating signal, the modulation frequency, and the modulation index. Another internal source is the noise generator. The noise generator can be used to create AM signals with wider sidebands, which more closely approximates the spectrum of AM signals that are modulated by human speech or other broader band signals. In this case, we specify the bandwidth of the noise. The SMA also supports the use of external modulation sources via two BNC connectors. This concludes our presentation, Configuring Amplitude Modulation on the SMA100B. Thanks for watching.